Dockers? Yeah, it's been really enjoyable so far. All the boys have been so welcoming. So I'm um, living with Sean Darcy in, in East Freo, which is a really nice part of the world. I'm still on the Google Maps to try and get to and from training, but um, no, I'm getting my getting my way around really nicely, which is good. So training's been nice and solid, and all the boys have come back really fit and firing. So it's made it easy to, to get going and get the footies out from day one. When you look at training standards and expectations, and things, how, how is it different from here compared to Gold Coast? Yeah, it's been outstanding. I think um, a lot of the, the younger group, um, particularly um, Caleb and Andy and that are driving the standards here. Um, I think both lists, the Suns and, and, Go and um, Fremantle are quite young, but um, they've both got those young leaders, as I mentioned, um, particularly here. So the standards have been absolutely amazing from the start. And um, I think I went through the list the other day. I'm 26 and I think I'm one of the older people at the group and I still feel like I'm 18 sometimes. So, um, yeah, it's really impressed with the way they drive their standards and, and set the tone from the start. So, yeah, it's great. It does it feel like you usually have someone like... Caleb 21, I feel something like it's being the one who's saying, well, this is how we play, this is how we train. Yeah, and I think that's a really important thing, um, particularly at a club like Fremantle, that it doesn't matter about age group, it's it's about um, who knows their role and, and being able to play their role and um, there's no egos. Everyone's able to speak up in a comfortable environment um, and everyone's really well respected. So um, whether it's um, Caleb or Nat or whoever it is who's speaking up and giving feedback, everyone's more than welcome to, to listen and um, take it all on board, that's for sure. Just what are your expectations having arrived here, given um, like your career installed on the Gold Coast? Uh, I really love to play AFL football. That's that's what I'm here to do. That's what I want to achieve. Um, the same as everybody on the list. And at the end of the day, 22 or three, um, it's pretty hard to have 40 odd go into that. So I believe in my ability to play AFL football, but I understand that it's no guarantees. So I'm going to work my, my bum off to try and get in there the same with all the other forwards to get the opportunity. So just a matter of me um, continually refining my craft and, and learning the roles and how that's going to fit into the game plan of the Dockers. So, um, as I said, I, I believe in my ability to be able to play consistent AFL football, but I know it's not guaranteed at the same time. Yeah. Sorry. Do you look at someone like Will Brody and see how his career has transformed at the Dockers and now yeah, well, I think I've said this a few times. Wiz has probably raised the bar pretty highly as far as the way that trades go. As you mentioned, he was playing some really good um, VFL football at the time at, at the Suns and couldn't get a look in at, at the highest level, but comes here and, and really fits into that role. Um, and he's bought in and he was um, really helpful in, in making the decision um, for me to come over here and, and fit in really well. So um, he's done an absolute credit to himself to, to get in here and, and fit in with it all. But um, those people that know Wiz, it's no surprise because he's been a really good player for a long time. So I'm pleased that he got the opportunity and um, yeah, fingers crossed I can follow any steps, that's for sure. You're obviously optimistic about yeah, finding your way into this team. What is it you think maybe Gold Coast had lost sight of in your I think, um, in fairness to Gold Coast, when you've got the likes of Marbio and Levi Casbolt kicking plenty of goals throughout the season, it's pretty hard to, to break in there. So. Um, a forward's role is to kick goals and, and those boys were consistently kicking goals at the highest level so um, yeah being able to get in there was was tricky at times and obviously this year with, with Ben King coming back it makes it even more challenging so um, I was able to read the play and I was really lucky that um, David Walls um, yeah, reached out and, and we were able to get something done to come here so yeah. When you look at that, when the forwards mids backs one point today and the forwards had yourself with Tabata and Fife and Jackson and Diamond Center as well. It's, it's a tough group to break into here as well, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. That's what I mean when I'm saying there's no guarantees at all. Um, all the boys have been amazing, and um, I always find it funny at football clubs the people that you're closest with tend to be the ones that you're fighting for spots at the same time. So, um, as I mentioned, that's the good thing with no egos here. Everyone's really happy to be able to help and, and educate people at the same time. So, um, if, as you mentioned, if you look at the different age groups, the likes of Jai Amos and Joshy Tracy is quite young compared to um, Nadi Tabernar. So it's good that everyone can learn off each other at, at those things and everyone's got different tricks. So I'm just looking forward to being a sponge to learn off all of them and um, yeah, hopefully get to work at the highest level with them as well. What have you noticed about Jackson's forward cup and Fife's forward cup? It's two very different forwards to what you would normally see up yeah, um, well, as you would have seen at training today, some of the stuff that Jackson can do is pretty crazy for a man of his height. Um, sometimes he can play that really sort of small crumbing role, but when he needs to stand tall, he's definitely really impressive at doing that as well. Um, and then, yeah, seeing Fife in the flesh is really impressive. His work rate um, and his ability to attack the contest is, is really impressive. So, um, yeah, again, really looking forward to learning off those boys. You touched on the training standard too, but uh, your fresh eyes on it. What do you make of their fitness at this time? Yeah, been really, really impressive. Um, obviously had the 4-1Ks um, early last week and the week before, and the boys come back in, in really good nick, which from a high performance point of view, that's all they could ask for. So it makes it a lot easy for us. We get to get the footballs out earlier rather than run around the white line doing laps trying to get up to up to speed. So 
Um, the training standards have been phenomenal and um, the drills have been at a really high high quality. So particularly this time before Christmas, it puts us a fair way ahead of, um, of where we, we want to be, so it's good. An opportunity standpoint for you, if you get into the team, you're in a team that's in the window at the moment, as opposed to one that was trying to break into finals for the first time. Does that excite you that, that the carrot is yeah, 100%. Well, at the end of the day, that's what you play for. You want to be able to play in that, that last Saturday in September. So um, I think that's what every team's team's aiming for. Um, and obviously last year, the Dockers went they went pretty close to it all. And um, the game against Collingwood would take a lot of the boys a long way playing in such a big crowd. And as I said, such a long group, uh, such a young group. Um, it'll take them a long way. And, and that's probably added another five or 10 finals games experience onto each player that was lucky enough to play in that side. So definitely the current. And that's what we're here to do. We want to try and to win a, win a premiership at the end of the day.